Hi, my name's Eliza and today I want to talk a little bit about authenticity. Before we dive in, if anybody isn't familiar with the term or the concept, in music, authenticity usually sounds like this. Just, I don't listen to the charts, it's not real music, is it? So, whilst we've probably all caught ourselves saying things like that, I know I have. You can actually understand this as something that's really important about the way that we form our identities around music, participate in subcultures, and enjoy music. When you actually dive into why we consider some music more authentic, where we might pinpoint that, that quality of authenticity, things get a little tricky and you find that it's not really as simple as yeah that's real rock and roll and that's not that's that's real music and that's not the reason it's so tricky is because nobody's really come up for an answer about where the authenticity in a particular piece of music might actually live whether it's in the performer's honesty in their lyrics whether it's in the playing of instruments versus the use of samples or autotune, whether it's in the way music can physically have an effect on you, make your hair stand on end and make your heart thump because of the bass and it feels so tangible, there's that sense of realness there. The way academics have tried to wrestle with this question is usually by categorizing authenticity into various forms. It's when we kind of get into these categorized readings of authenticity, you really realize any genre, any artist, any mode of production can be considered authentic. Lawrence Grossberg is an academic who categorized authenticity by genre. He looked at folk authenticity, postmodern authenticity. He essentially argued that within each genre, there were certain requirements that, if met, would render that piece of music authentic to the audience within that genre. There are a few problems with that assessment. Firstly, the fact that genre is a tricky concept in and of itself, and the genre rock encompasses so many different sounds, artists, and styles. It's really difficult to come up with a one-size-fits-all policy. Also, there were some things he attributed to dance music, for example, that rang true for all genres, such as tangibility, like we talked about a second ago. Another man called Johan von Nass, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, moved understandably away from genre definitions of authenticity and towards a more socio-cultural perspective. I won't go too far into it just now because it's more sort of a stop that academia made along the way to trying to understand authenticity. He essentially just repurposes Grossberg's ideas but removes the element of genre. The most helpful way that we've seen different kinds of authenticity be categorised is by Alan Moore. I highly recommend this book. Now, Moore begins to get more to the heart of how authenticity actually works. He talks about who is being authenticated rather than what. So rather than saying, that's, that's real music, listen to the guitar solo, Moore kind of moves away and looks at you, the audience. He suggests that rather than a certain piece of music being authentic, what we're actually seeking to do is authenticate ourselves when we talk about music as being real or authentic in any way. This doesn't mean that it's invalid, it's just important to recognise. So he suggests that rather than saying, we can know that this bit of music is authentic because that singer wrote those lyrics and he, he really means that, or that bit of music is, is authentic because I can tell that they're really playing their instrument. What we actually need to do is authenticate ourselves. If you're a fan of music, the music you listen to is really important to you. It can be a cornerstone of your identity. I know that my music taste is, and particularly for genres like rock where there's a subculture attached, it's really important that we feel that the music we love is something of more value, something that's, that's more real than what else is out there. So he sort of suggests that what we actually do is we take music that we, we love, we enjoy, for some reason in the pit of our stomach we feel connected to it moves us and we project our feelings about that music onto it and render it authentic because to us it feels that way. So if you catch yourself thinking that, I don't know, Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple are super authentic and what Kanye West isn't because he uses autotune, well remember that he uses autotune as an aesthetic choice. 
is pretty self-aware, why does that necessarily render it inauthentic? Jimmy Page uses an overdrive pedal, guitars don't naturally sound like that. I mean, there were points in fairly recent history where singers who sang using microphones instead of just projecting or using megaphones were considered inauthentic and using technology to cheat in some way. The markers by which we measure things as being authentic always move. And they move because what we're actually doing is authenticating ourselves. A really good example to illustrate this is the case of our good old panel, Elvis Presley. Obviously, the music of Elvis has long been subject to speculation regarding the ethics of him singing songs that were written by African-American artists. And whilst I'm not going to get into the politics of cultural appropriation at the moment, it's pretty telling that typically people... It's pretty telling that typically people who are fans of Elvis tend to favour the argument or see the side more that he was just a lover of this music, wanted to participate in it. And people who aren't fans of Elvis will probably see the side that's more about did he, you know, pay pay the correct amount of homage to the people that originated this style. Whilst I'm certainly not going to go into that at the moment, the point to look at is people's response to those big and sort of difficult questions with music that might seriously undermine the life and work of an artist. There's a direct correlation between whether they just enjoy the music or not. And that's kind of authenticity in practice. Essentially, more opposed to the idea that authenticity is truly subjective to the individual. We find the evidence that we need to find. So essentially, it's really, really important to understand authenticity, not as something that music has or is, or certain artists are or have or use, but to understand authenticity as a process, as a way that we interact with music in order to make it meaningful, to have meaningful connections with the music we love. It doesn't mean it's not valid. It doesn't mean that you can't feel that some music is real and others isn't. So I would suggest as a fan, if you're interested in it, just try and, and pay attention and reflect on how you mark authenticity. What are your factors and why? How does music you consider to be authentic make you feel? And how do you feel about music you consider to be inauthentic? It's certainly a really interesting point for reflection, especially as a rock fan. I'm gonna leave further reading if you're interested in the topic at all in the description below. You can have a conversation in the comments. Obviously, it's a really, really tricky topic. So thank you so much for letting me waffle at you briefly. I hope you find it something interesting to reflect on and thank you so much for watching.